In this video, I'm going to be talking about a new piece of technology that I've added to my setup. Okay, so the other day I was watching another YouTuber who uh, kind of operates in the e-learning design and development space, um, you know, as well as others. And he was interviewing um, a representative from Sure Microphones. And they were talking about a lot of the different uh, technology that Sure is in, including in their microphones these days. And uh, the representative herself was actually using the MV7. It looked like she was in a home office. But she emphasized that, you know, this is a great microphone for people in the podcast business because, of course, uh, unlike many other professional microphones that are XLR only, this microphone has a USB connection as well. So on the back of this, it's got XLR, USB, and, of course, a, uh, a headphone jack as well for those who want to monitor what they're saying uh, directly and live. Um, so a great choice for, uh, for people, I think in the e-learning industry as well, because I think some of the things that uh, we look for in a microphone are going to be the same sorts of things that someone in the podcast industry, uh, is going to be looking at as well. So, uh, I decided to purchase it based on a couple things that she said. The first thing she said, she emphasized that the home office that she was uh, doing this interview from had not been treated for sound. It was just a standard home office, nothing special. Uh, but the technology that the MV7 uses is very forgiving when it comes to, you know, environments where you're using it. It has uh, this sound isolating technology that they emphasize uh, being ideal for someone in our industry um, that basically takes rid of all that background noise, a lot of the noise that's created by things like reflections and echoes in the room. I'm in such a room where this room clearly has not been treated uh, you know, for sound absorption. And uh, there's quite a bit of echo in here. We've got tall ceilings in here and it can be a problem. Now, for years, I've been using the Blue Yeti, as many of you know, and it's a great microphone. It's uh, There's a couple of things, though, that were bothering me about it. First of all, the physical bulk of the Blue Yeti, it's a large microphone. And because I'm working with multiple monitors here, a larger microphone is actually in my eye, eye line, line of sight and you know preventing me from really using the second monitor the mv7 is much more compact uh it's heavier it's all metal construction but uh you know it definitely kind of blocked my vision of what might be happening on my second monitor over here uh, so that was an issue the other thing too is that the blue yeti part of part of its bulk is probably the fact that it is a uh, a multiple pattern microphone and it's set up can be used as a unidirectional microphone, which is how I mostly used it. But also, you know, it's got a bi-directional microphone, which would be good if you were interviewing someone sitting across a table. And omnidirectional if you're, you know, maybe trying to capture all the sounds in a whole room. Now, my thinking is that might be a great microphone for uh, you know, when you don't know what your situation will be and you need a microphone that covers all those bases. But the truth is, is that 99.9% .9 of the time, maybe even 100% of the time, what I need is a unidirectional microphone. I need something that picks up my voice directly here and doesn't pick up a whole lot of other things. So again, going to that fact that it's a very forgiving microphone and it's really ideal for those that could be in any environments, I decided to make the purchase. Now, keep in mind that the Blue Yeti is about $100 US and this microphone here is about $230, $250 US, depending if it's on sale or not. I purchased mine from Amazon and of course, being a Canadian, I paid in Canadian dollars. Uh, so I'm not sure if I got a good deal, but it said it was on sale. So uh, I went with that. So, you know, it's a bit more of an expense, but I think it's more suitable for the types of things that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased about that. 
it comes with or is made available this SurePlus mode of software, which makes it relatively easy to set it up and use it. Uh, and there's sort of two modes with that. And I can show you sort of how that works here. Uh, you have your auto levels, which is kind of like a set it and forget it mode. You can store your presets in this preset drop down menu. And I'll show you that a little bit more when we talk about the manual settings. Uh, there are controls on the microphone. First of all, there's a LED VU meter across the top, along with a touch bar where you can set your boost gain and, uh, and do things like mute and uh, turn the mix between headphones, uh, listening to your microphone and maybe listening to other people's microphones as well. Uh, but they're kind of hard to get to. That would be my one criticism of this microphone because they're directly below the mounting hardware. So to get your little fat finger in here like I would, it'd be difficult to do. The good news is, is that these controls and more are available in the SurePlus Motive app itself here. So, you know, I can go ahead and mute the microphone from Uh, but of course, then I can unmute it and uh, bring myself back into the mix there. Monitor mix uh, is really just a, a way for you to set your levels in your headphones of what you're hearing from yourself. And if you're on a web conference, for example, what you're hearing from others. So you would slide the bar back and forth. Mic position, obviously near is the choice that you would want to do most of the time. But if you needed this mic out of frame, for example, or the circumstances were just preventing you from using it close up, you can switch it to far. And if it was further away, I could continue to use it like so. So if I wanted to keep it out of frame, it's uh, pretty good. Obviously near is gonna be better. So I'm gonna switch back to that. And down here, you have some basic tone controls. Uh, nothing too fancy. I like the natural tone, but if you want a richer sound, you might want to go with dark. Or if you want a brighter, crisper, cleaner sound, maybe bright is the choice for you. I'm going to switch it back to natural. Now, I mentioned that there are uh, LED VU meters on the top. I could turn those off from the app itself so that I don't see them, um, you know, bouncing up and down as I speak. And I can also lower the brightness by turning on night mode as well. And that can be helpful if, you know, you don't want people to be distracted by what's happening on the microphone. Now, if we go over to manual, you get a few extra controls that might be beneficial to you. Let's go through that. So if I go over to manual, uh, you know, I, of course, can choose my microphone gain. Uh, I've played around with this a little bit. I think I'm okay with uh, probably somewhere in the 31.5 dB, but, you know, obviously you're going to need to play with that and set it accordingly here. Same mute control that we saw in the previous. Uh, and I'm going to come back to presets once I go through everything here monitor mix, same as before. Instead of tone, you have a little bit more of a, a traditional EQ. Uh, you know, it's not a multi-band parametric EQ, but you can choose these defaults. Again, flat or uh, just normal would be the choice you probably want to stick with. But let's say you want to get rid of some of the boominess in your voice, so you could do a high pass filter. There is this option called Presence Boost, which essentially is boosting your mid to high level frequencies. And then there's a combination of the two. So it will get rid of the bass, but also boost the uh, mid to treble range of frequencies as well. And you also have a limiter and compressor. And uh, what these do is try to keep your audio sort of at an even keel. You're not going to have sudden dramatic increases in volume or sudden dramatic decreases in volume. So you could turn on the limiter and set your compression level accordingly. And you can just experiment with how those work. And how you would test this out is suddenly switch to very high, bright, loud speaking voice and then maybe go to something more quiet and see what it does. Uh, the risk of going too heavy on the compressor might be that it might sound too processed or too artificial. 
but you could start with something like maybe just going with the light compressor so it's not too artificial sounding and again like before you have your live meters and your night mode if you wish to have them now once you've got everything set the way that you want it you can save this as a preset and you might have different circumstances so that's the advantage of being able to save perhaps multiple presets so if i wanted to save this for doing youtube videos i could call it uh, let's just select all my characters there and call this youtube you got to spell it right of course so go ahead and press save and now i have that preset in place there so everything should work great so again a little bit more expensive than maybe some of the other microphones out there but if you're like me and e-learning design and development is not just a hobby not just something you do part-time but it is your career obviously the money is well spent here this is the best quality microphone i've used in many years and i'm sure it will increase the quality of my videos as well as the e-learning courses that i design and develop if you thought this video was helpful please like and share it with your colleagues if you need help with adobe captivate hire paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.